So after making a major go-to-market change, what are some best practices for time frame to evaluate the efficacy before making further adjustments or tweaks? Ah. Okay, so do you let the cement dry? And how long do you let the cement dry? So I don't know if either one of you want to take a shot at that. Thank you, Kimberly. It's nice to see you on the webinar. I guess I'd, I'd jump in just super quickly on, it really depends on your business model, you know, it, and it depends on the go-to-market change. So if your sales process, I mean, your sales cycle is like a month or six weeks, then your time frame for evaluating and making changes to and iterating on go-to-market changes is going to be quick. I mean, maybe you give it three months or something, but if your, your sales model is 18 months sales or, you know, nine months sales, even, you know, maybe a good rule of thumb would be to say, add 50% on top of your, um, on top of your sales cycle. I don't, I'm just making that up, but I would throw that out. What do you think, Heidi? I, I'm spot on. I agree. I, I think it was the primary driver is going to be the sales cycle and the operating mechanisms behind it. I would also recommend, you know, as a startup junkie, we make a lot of mistakes, but we want to fail fast, right? So let's figure out the primary driver of why we made this change. So what, what would success look like? And whether that be creating more pipeline, give it that sales cycle plus a little extra padding because you do need time to adjust and adapt and then see, are we reaching there? Is it trending upwards week over week, month over month? And if not, shut it down, move back to what works. And you just keep trying, especially in startup mode, because there's going to be a lot of failures, but you just want to fail fast and pivot. You wonder how many of these decisions around the timing are clouded by subscriptions. So mm -hmm. if you get a good deal to buy a two-year subscription with some new SASE tool and you know six months in, you realize it's not going to do what you need it to do or whatever, right. how many companies limp along and don't fail fast, like you're saying, Heidi, just because of a decision? You know, these tech stacks are so interesting and complicated now with so many tools stacked upon each other that if one isn't the right one, how can you fail fast if you've, if you've uh, committed yourself? And I, I think sometimes an overlooked step that's incredibly important is private previews, whether it be a system or pricing, trying to use that beta group uh, in whether it's, again, the system or pricing and see if it works without disrupting the entire go-to-market engine. I think that's often an uh, avenue that some people just skip over for some reason. Oh, yeah, that's, that's a good point.